So we've finished setting up our dev environment and now it's time to get stuck into the nitty gritty details of software dependencies. In this video, we'll be configuring our Python virtual environment and covering some key licensing considerations when selecting project dependencies. As there's a good chance you'll be developing this software application over a relatively long time frame and may want to revert changes which introduced bugs, I recommend using a version control system such as Git to track your work. We'll create a Git repository by navigating to the root of our project workspace and running the command git init. Alternatively, from within VS Code, with the folder open as a workspace, we can select the source control tab and click initialize repository. From here on out, I'll assume that you know how Git works, but if you want to learn more about how to use Git and push to a remote repository such as GitHub, the Atlassian Git tutorials are some of the best that I've seen on the topic. Links in the description. Now we're going to focus on our virtual environment. There are several reasons why you would want to use a virtual environment, but the primary reasons are that you want to isolate your Python project from any other Python installations on your system to prevent dependency conflicts, and to make your application more platform independent. Note that virtual environments do not necessarily guarantee that software will always work across different system architectures, such as the AMD64 architecture in modern Windows PCs, compared to the ARM64 architecture of modern Apple computers and Raspberry Pi devices. The system used throughout this series is a 64-bit AMD64 Windows 10 PC. Bruh. A mouthful, I know. And if your computer uses the same architecture, you shouldn't have any issues following along. For other operating systems, I don't expect any major changes to be required, as dependencies for this project are quite minimal, and pre-built binaries for dependencies should already be available across all platforms. If you encounter any issues, please leave a comment below so we can work together to resolve them and help other viewers with the same problem. Pressing onwards, we're now going to create the requirements.txt file for our virtual environment in the root of our workspace. Here's the complete list of dependencies we'll be needing to implement the core functionality and GUI for our application. When finding the dependencies for your project, it's extremely important to research how they're licensed, as there can be major legal implications if you ignore licensing during the production of commercial software. As a disclaimer, I am not a lawyer, nor am I your lawyer. This video should not be misconstrued as legal advice and is only for educational purposes, so please do your own research. The MIT license, Apache 2.0 license, and BSD3 clause license are all extremely permissive licenses that allow a software package, module, or library to be used in commercial software products. <laughs> Just be aware that sometimes these programs have their own dependencies, which use different licenses, so please do your own due diligence by checking the README, license files, and any other relevant documents in the dependencies source repo. On a side note, just be aware that the BSD4 clause license is not compatible with the Apache 2.0 license, and please be especially careful when using software distributed under the GNU Public License or Lesser GNU Public License, also known as the GPL and LGPL licenses respectively. If mishandled, these viral copyleft licenses may require you to open source your whole project, especially in the case of the GPL. Personally, I'm a big fan of open source projects and make contributions when I have some spare time. However, when you're dealing with commercial products, you need to make an effort to tread carefully. Now, moving through our dependencies in order, autopy.exe is a GUI interface for Pi installer which will turn our program into an executable file for distribution to end users. Moving on to cryptography, we'll be using this module to encrypt data in our license files, as well as data sent during communication with our license server. Next, we have custom tkinter, which is a UI library that wraps the popular tkinter library to provide a more modern look. We'll be using this to build the GUI for our application, and from here on, I'll be referring to it as tkinter for simplicity. After this, we have Cython, which is a Python to C compiler which we'll be using for obfuscation, making it harder to recover the source code from our compiled executable. In the compilation section of this series, I'll be showing you some tips and tricks for automating Cython builds, as well as how to include a tree of Cython binaries in a Py installer executable. Next, we have NumPy for number handling, followed by our main core dependency, PyPDF, which we'll use to split PDF files. By the way, if you found this video useful, I'd love it if you could click the like button below so more like-minded people just like you can start their own dev journey. Great, so now that we have all our dependencies in the requirements.txt file, we'll move on to setting up a virtual environment so we can isolate the software's Python dependencies from the rest of our computer. First, navigate to the base directory of your repo and run the command pip install pip env. Note that previously I've tried running pip install pip env with the user flag as this is generally good practice, but encountered some issues when doing so, so please be aware of this problem and run the command without the user flag. Once this finishes, we temporarily set an environment variable to 1 to ensure that the virtual environment folder produced is created in the current directory. We then run pip env install r requirements.txt to generate a pip file and pip file.lock, as well as a .vm directory containing our virtual environment. Do note that from time to time, vulnerabilities may show up in some of these packages, so I recommend setting up something like Dependabot in your remote GitHub repository to keep an eye out for changes and create updates pull requests when necessary. 
With the virtual environment created, there's just a few steps left before we can get into the fun stuff. First, we'll start by creating our source directory. Create a folder in the root of your workspace named src, all lowercase. This will be the home of all Python source files used in our project. Next, we'll create a main.py file inside this source folder, which will serve as the external entry point script for our application. After this, we'll create another folder in the source directory named after the module we'll be creating. This can be the project name or any other name of your choosing, but word of advice, keep it simple because we'll be using it frequently in source files for absolute imports. The reason why we use absolute imports will be clear once we reach the compilation stage. In this case, I'll be naming it Terra. Finally, create a file named underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot pi in the root of your new module folder so Python recognizes it as a module. All that's left to do now is to test our virtual environment. To do this, we'll uncomment the line in our settings.json file to update our default terminal profile. As previously mentioned, if you're using a different platform, you may need to tweak this setting, so I've included a link to the terminal profiles documentation in the description below. Now, let's try opening up a terminal in VS Code. To find the shortcut for the integrated terminal, simply click on terminal in the top menu Bar. You can now use the shortcut shown or the new terminal menu item to create a new terminal pane. With the terminal open, you should now see .vnv in parentheses on the left side of the prompt. This means the virtual environment is active and you can test this by running the command where Python on Windows or which Python on Mac and Linux, where you should find that the Python executable in your virtual environment is at the top of the resulting list. And that's a wrap on the setup process. We're now ready to start digging into the exciting part of the project. If you found this video useful, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future dev content. And if you're ready to start working on the core program, click the video on the left. Until next time.